Okay, hello. My name is Joachim. I work at Avinur. I'm a developer. Uh, and I'm not here to talk... Avinur is the airport company in Norway, running most of the airports. But I'm not here to talk about aviation. Uh, I'm here to talk about how we made a Christmas calendar using only AI-generated code. Uh, before I get into this project, I just got to give you a little background in this. Uh, every year, our team, uh, people bring in a gift before December, and every day in December, we pull someone who gets uh, the gift of the day. Uh, and the easiest way to do this would probably be to uh, have all the names written on a note and put it in a box and draw someone every day. But we're a developer team, so of course we want to overcomplicate things by making a digital solution for this. Uh, and we're a very few small group of .NET developers in uh, Avinur, but we figured this would be a great project to make our first Blazor site. Uh, and since the new big trend in, uh, in our industry is also ChatGPT or generative AI, why not combine those ideas and have AI generate all of our Blazor site and we could just lean back and uh, dictate to it what we wanted, as if we were kings. Perfect way to develop. Uh, now I'm going to take you through how we did this project, the fun little project. Uh, so let's start. Uh, the first thing was the first prompt. It's a very simple prompt. I want a Christmas calendar uh, component view in Blazor. The calendar should consist of 24 boxes randomly spread across the page. They should all be the same size and the number of the with the number of the box in the center. Very simple. Here we imagine kind of like a traditional Christmas calendar where you open a little door and you get a chocolate, but instead of a chocolate, it would be a colleague's face opening up or showing up. So ChatGPT, as it always does, delivered us uh, an answer uh, with some code, mainly HTML and CSS to begin with. Some of you are maybe sharp enough to see how it'll look, the first uh, results here. Uh, but since this is a lightning talk, I don't have time to show you all the code uh, that we got. I'm instead going to show you the results of the code uh, and the prompts we did to get that result. But if you want to follow, the entire first half of our project is in one chat uh, that you can follow in, uh, on ChatGPT. Uh, so we've asked ChatGPT to make 24 boxes randomly spread across the page. Uh, let's see what it looks like. Well, it did, it did the task, it's 24 boxes, and they are randomly across the page. Uh, and they even made them red and white, the Christmas colors, so... But we didn't actually really want it random, did we? We wanted kind of like a grid, so we just corrected it, asked, let's make it a grid instead, and fill it in four rows, and we got this. And it's a good beginning for a Christmas calendar. Uh, no, I'm not going to go through every single prompt we did, because when you code with just using ChatGPT, you have to ask it for every minor data, like changing the padding or the font sizes and stuff. So I'm going to skip over those, but if you follow the chat, you'll see those too. Uh, uh, now, the next big step we had to do is to make these little doors open when we ask it, when we click them. So we just asked ChatGPT, can you make the doors open? And this is what we got. Uh, some doors open this way, I'm sure, but it's not really what we had in mind. It's not really revealing anything, and uh, it's more flipping than opening. But we proceed. Uh, let's ask ChatGPT to open it from the right side, uh, and as well as adding a gray box underneath so it reveals something. Uh, you can also see we did this in two prompts. Uh, we found that splitting it up helps. Uh, and now we're getting somewhere. It's opening. It, there's something underneath. It's kind of like a calendar. Uh, and we wanted, of course, since it's a digital calendar, to have more features than just opening and showing a face. Let's have something happen when you open it beyond that. So to begin with, they asked it to uh, have a dialog box show up that we can fill in later with the winner face and everything. You can also see we also made it remove the doors when they opened and make the animation a bit slower. Uh, and this works really well. At this point, we have the basic functions of a calendar, and we need to add some pictures now. 
We've also uh, asked ChatGPT to make the code for a model for persons to hold their names and their images at this point. Uh, and we filled in some AI-generated profile pictures to test. Uh, but instead of just revealing them, we figured a good thing would be to add drama to it, flicker through all the pictures when you open a box, and then settling on something that's the winner. And we asked ChatGPT in one uh, uh, prompt, and it gave us the code to flicker through. It worked really well. Now you can see it flickering through images, you can choose a winner. This was really exciting. I mean, we've not coded anything ourselves, always ChatGPT, and we got really overexcited about this and figured, now it's time to make it more calendar-like. Uh, so a calendar is, tends to be, instead of just white with boxes, it has one big image, and you have to kind of search for uh, the today's box to open, uh, which is kind of hard to find. Uh, no UX was involved in that design, I'm sure. But we had no UX in our project either, so we wanted to make it. Uh, so we asked ChatGPT to make the background one background image that we found uh, and make the boxes transparent uh, to make it more look Christmassy. Uh, I mean, it's Christmassy, but it's not very pleasant to look at. And uh, this image was just some uh, random Christmas wrapper that we found. Uh, but this is an AI project. We need to have AI images. <laughs> At this point, we also wanted fireworks and confetti to show up when you open the door and ask ChatGPT to make that, but it somehow struggled with that, uh, and we ended up having to abandon that one long chat we had until now and instead do individual uh, queries for the next things. But let's uh, make some images. You've already seen we did some profile images uh, for the persons. And this worked really well, because when the profile pictures are small enough, you don't notice the weird little details, like the wheels floating under the airplane and stuff. Uh, so that was really good. That was exciting. Uh, and we figured, well, if it works for profiles, let's make uh, a big front page as well, saying in big letters, uh, Christmas calendar, Yule calendar, the Norwegian word for it, with the PMK, the team that I'm on. Uh, and we got this. Uh, it looks a bit like uh, Christmas Greatest Hits album cover, I think. Uh, and if you notice, it's, as the keynote yesterday it also talked a bit about, spelling is not ChatGPT's strongest side in image generation. The, it always adds an extra E and N. Different calendar was hard to spell. And sometimes the spelling even got a bit uh, unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> For those who don't understand, in Norwegian, that almost says something very different. <laughs> but at least it got the calendar part right this time. But we decided to abandon the whole idea of having a front page with text at this point. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have this calendar, now we need to add the background, which we now decided to be no text, just a simple uh, Christmassy background, uh, and make some more uh, adjustments to make it more Christmassy. We wanted the dialog box to be more Christmassy. That's literally the entire prompt we asked for the dialog box. Uh, we also asked for some green colors and font, Christmassy fonts, uh, that we decided to apply everywhere. Or we asked ChatGPT to apply everywhere. And the results of these ones, it was starting to get somewhere. Now we're getting uh, Christmassy. It looks like a calendar uh, and has the Christmassy theme and functionality. Uh, to be fair, at this point, I haven't touched upon it, but we also made some simple admin pages for adding teams and uh, another one for adding players that didn't have any design. They were just to add things. But the calendar itself was pretty much functional at this point. Uh, the last thing we added was uh, to make it snow. We got ChatGPT to add. And uh, we were ready for Christmas. But before I finish, I want to just talk a bit about what was the result of this? Uh, what's the conclusions to draw from this kind of project? Was it just like a fun project that we uh, wasted our time uh, making just for internal use? Well, kind of, but uh, we also got something out of it. It was a very fun way to learn uh, both Blazor and prompting and ChatGPT. Because uh, we sat all together, prompting it, getting the responses, looking at it, reading it, seeing other sources. 
And since uh, this project, I mean, it's a year ago since we made the, the calendar almost, we've had other projects like uh, a Blazor project. If you've traveled here by plane, you might have arrived at Oslo Airport and connected to the Wi-Fi. That's a Blazor page you'd be faced with that we made after the calendar. Uh, or if with ChatGPT, besides using it every day for our work, for coding, uh, we also have implemented it. If you have the Avinode app, you can now get suggestions for traveling from OpenAI or uh, ChatGPT by following a flight. So we've got some genuine uses from the knowledge we got from these fun projects. Uh, and we've not stopped doing fun projects, obviously. Uh, since then, we've also made stuff like uh, a screen in our office to make an AI image of the lunch today. Uh, and lately, we've been working on like a prediction game for the office for the Euro starting tomorrow. So I think uh, this kind of like simple project to do together really helps. Uh, it's a, new, a different way of learning than just uh, listening to someone reading stuff about technology. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.